Hi, my name is Sally Calloway and welcome to a video tutorial that we're making just to update you on the feature which was updated in the most recent version of FMO Studio. Uh, we made some terrific updates to the profiler which I would really love to share with you in this video. So uh, today what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to show you the profiler layout and a few of the things that you can see and do with profiler. We're going to follow this up with a really fantastic video about how to use the API capture feature in Profiler to troubleshoot and record various play styles with the Profiler, but that'll be in a separate video. So I just want to start off by making sure that you've all seen the Profiler and know what it is and what it's there for. So the Profiler is a tool that allows you to assess the performance and do some iterative mixing of your project, both within the studio environment and in game as well. So the profiler is super cool because it allows you to have multiple sessions that you can save and you can view variable combinations of data both live and actually view them post-mortem. So once you've finished recording the session and that gives you access to volume, voices, CPU, memory, lifespans and instances both on the fly and recorded so you can analyze them at a later date. It also allows you to view and listen to individual captures of playthroughs and compare the mix across many different play styles. And it gives you the API capture function, which you can use to edit and update the banks. So make changes to your events once you've actually recorded a profiler session and then iterate on your profiler sessions by making updates to those banks and making sure that you're improving your mix as you go along. I'll show you a bit more to do with that in a later video, but today we're going to jump straight into the profiler layout and I'll show you how to use it. So this is the profiler window. It looks kind of boring right now, but that's because we don't have any sessions. Um, in this left-hand tab here is where you can see all your sessions and you can make a new session just by right-clicking and selecting new session. Now I'm going to call this example because it is an example. As you can see, I already have a project that's open here for you. So this is just the project from the Unreal Engine 4 video tutorial series. Um, what I'm going to do is, because I can only see a master bus in my session at the moment, um, I'm going to drag and drop um, some events in to effectively scope them into my profiler session. Now, automatically when you do create each blank profiler session, it will only load up the master bus and any other buses that you have um, within uh, the project. Uh, so you will need to, if you want to view that the data for the different events separately, drag and drop them into the profiler session from either the event editor or from your event browser. This one right here. So now that I've dragged and dropped those in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up all the data graphs just by right clicking on each track and selecting each of the data graphs that I want to see. All right, so now that I've loaded each of the data graphs in, just as um, each of them are loaded up for the master bus, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start recording with the profiler and I'll talk you through what each of the data graphs show when we've actually got some sound coming through. So I'm going to play the environment ambient sound. Then I'm going to hit record in the profiler and you'll see it starts recording and it's showing me some data. Yay. So um, these radio buttons up the top here will let you select which graph is shown on top. At the moment, we've got the instances graph shown, but I'll talk you through everything from the levels. So the levels right here gives you the RMS, which is the negative 35 value and the peak values as well at the same time there. So they're listed when you mouse over the graph, it'll show you the value. And that's the same for any of the data graphs. Also, you can choose uh, memories right there. Now this event has very low memory usage, so you can see it's using practically nothing. We'll have a look at the CPU graph. This is the milliseconds of CPU time taken to process um, the event when it's actually being played. Now the voices chart shows you how many voices are active at any one time. Now voices you can also think of as modules. And because we have a number of sound modules in this event, because there are scatterer sounds as well, um, we have many voices that are operating at the same time. So you can hear some different winds and some birds and some dogs as well. The lifespans chart will show you the current lifespan of that event. So because we only pressed play on one particular sound event and we're only playing that through studio, the current lifespan for that event is just that one and it is continuing on, which is why we've got a line there. And if you hit this radio button again, you'll see how many instances are active. So there's only one instance because we only pressed play on one event in one event editor window. 
Now I'll also show you right on the right hand side here we've got this 3D view panel. Now because this event has no uh, particular 3D panning that's happening at any one time, now if I was to stop this sound and press play on my tornado sound and then move this sound around in the 3D previewer, I'm providing 3D panning information that we'll be able to see in the profiler. So I'll just move it left to right as well. And then what I might do is stop this, stop the recording, and we'll go back and have a, have a look. Here's my tornado sound. Now, as you can see, it's showing us the recorded 3D position as we were dragging it around in the 3D previewer in the event editor. Now, if I was to select that particular instance, it would show us the distance parameter information that's associated with that particular instance. And as we can see, not only is it showing us the current 3D position during that particular part of the playback, but it's showing us the distance value that was associated with that as well. Now we can load up the, um, the parameter information as a separate graph just by right clicking on the, on the dial and pressing parameter graph right here. And as you can see, our parameter information is visible right here. Now that's kind of it for the crash course in the profiler UI. Um, we've gone through a number of things to do with the setting up your sessions and recording your sessions. And then we've had a look at what each of the data graphs mean and um, some advanced functions like having a look at the 3D positioning that's applicable to the sounds and then also displaying each of the parameters that you might have associated with that sound. So that's about it for this video tutorial where we covered the basics of the profiler. We gave you a crash course in the UI and functionality of the profiler that was updated in FMOD Studio 1.06. Please join us for the follow-up video where we will be hooking the profiler up to Unreal Engine 4 for a troubleshooting and analysis of the mix that we have here in FMOD Studio. All of us at FMOD would love to thank you for joining us and we all hope to see you again soon.